Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, as you see, I'm from University of Waterloo. So I, today I thought I'd just talk about problems that we need to solve. And these are problems that most likely we would need 25 to 50 years to solve. So it may not be very relevant to industrial perspective if you're interested to make products with them in the next two, three years. But these are problems that, in my understanding, uh, uh, are preventing medical imaging of making any breakthrough. So the, the three main problems of medical imaging, pixel voxel impasse. So as long as we are working on working with pixels, generating pixels, capturing pixels, nothing big will happen. So we have to come up with something else. It has to be a completely different generation of sensors and imaging devices that do not capture pixels or voxels. So when we look at pixels, pe people think, so we, with, with going 3D or 4D, the problem is solved. No, this is not, this is just postponing the problem. Other problem in medical imaging is intra and inter-observer variability, which is a cute name for errors. So people make errors. Doctors make error. So, and that error we call variability, for many reasons, because I don't know. Um, People are sue friendly and will sue you if you call this error. But the problem is that nobody knows what is the right action when you interpret a medical image. Nobody knows what is the right segment. Nobody knows that. So, and I will give you some numbers how bad the problem is. And the third problem is that we are working with static algorithms. Every algorithm that we have has a set of parameters. Somebody has to adjust it. So we are wasting all of our time in adjusting and fine-tuning and customizing algorithm. And then after five years and two PhDs and millions of R&D, we make it work for one case, and then, okay, we are happy. So as long as we are working with this generation of software, nothing big will happen. So if you look at a prostate MR image, and you zoom in <clears throat> into... Um, inside to look at something. So you don't see the individual pixels here, but <clears throat> the problem is when you go inside the image to work with pixels, you have already lost the overview. So you already don't know where you are, what you are doing. So you don't see the global picture. So any pixel oriented, and I don't mean, so we have a class that we call global methods in software. They are not global per se. So we apply some transforms, and then we bring it from pixel to the frequency domain. That doesn't work either. So when we say global picture is to understand the image in its entirety, not, not pixel-wise, not group-wise, not transform-wise. So as long as we are working in this, and then if you are here, you don't know where to go. And then you spend time, and then you get caught into nested loops, and then you waste time, and then you have to deal with quadratic time consumption and things like that. And it's totally forgotten that you are here to detect cancer in the peripheral zone of the prostate gland. So you completely forget about that. So when we get lost in the pixel forest, accurate segmentation is impossible. Who has solved? So look at how many image papers we have in, in segmentation. None of them works in reality. None of them works. So precise registration is impossible. You apply the method that is the result of 25 research, and you get artifacts. So fast retrieval is impossible. We cannot find images in even moderate-sized archives. So what could be the potential solution? Well, we need new imaging technologies. When I say molecular imaging as a potential way, I don't necessarily mean what we have today. So something that we don't know what it is. And that would be one of them. So at the molecular level, come up with new imaging technologies that do not capture pixels, capture tissue types as groups, as regions. And of course, from the software side, we need a new algorithm framework that sort of work granularly. So capture granules, not pixels, a group of, of pixels that have certain, uh, we have been trying to do that with uh, uniformity in segmentation. Of course, it doesn't work because the information has been lost. When you lose it at the, at the hardware level, at the sensoric level, you cannot recover at the software level. So that's what we are uh, trying to do for many, many years. 
Of course, one of the biggest problems when you watch clinical everyday work is uh, intra-observable intra variability. Giving this prostate gland, very simple task, very simple. This is not a tumor, just a prostate. Give it to five doctors, ask them to contour it twice. Look how much different they are. That's prostate. It's not even a breast lesion, for God's sake. So huge, huge difference. So who is right? Nobody knows who is right. So if this is for treatment, what happens in the treatment? Well, that's one of the reasons 15,000 people die in US because of the overdose of CT. So uh, inaccuracy, which is variability. Look, prostate up to 18% difference between experts. Bladder 32, up to 54% for something really criti critical such as lung. So what it means, it means we don't have a solution. We are working blindly. But since we don't have anything better, nobody complains. So you have to deal with it. You have to deal with the side effects as a patient. So of course, when the red area is the tumor and the green area is the healthy tissue, and you have so much difference when you, for example, use radiation in radiotherapy, you are hitting healthy tissue. And you are not hitting completely the tumor. Because nobody knows where the tumor is. Very simple question. Where is it? Nobody knows. So the subjectivity dilemma, that's because we say subjective, the nature of things, the limitations of imaging, accurate segmentation, basically impossible. Algorithmically, forget about it. So we have to go with the experts, at least, because they disregard what the algorithm, the software, give them anyway. Reliable diagnosis, impossible. And efficient treatment, impossible. If I cannot say where is what, if we cannot agree, if we don't have any consensus. So potential solution, we have to learn from experts. We have to give up our ego in academic research, give up inventing the super algorithm for segmentation, for example. Forget about that. We have to learn. We have to put the expert in the center of calculation. No explicit algorithm, no static algorithm. Learn learnable, flexible platforms that the expert can rely on, and then it can learn from the expert. And of course, it seems that building computational consensus would be the only way to address the variability issue. We have to be able to learn from experts and of it, in his absence, build things on his behalf and then build consensus depending on uh, many things we have. So this is here one example that you can build consensus. Another problem, image retrieval, that we have packs. Uh, for many different fields, and you get a query, and you have to find something in a huge database. So you can find similar cases for treatment methods for success, uh, to see how successful they are. And again, finding similar images is very difficult, and uh, fast retrieval is basically impossible. We say NP-hard, which is, is not doable even if you have the supercomputer. And potential solution, we need some visual annotations. So there is no text annotations for tumors and tissue types and cancerous tissue. And we have to learn the anatomy map based on visual annotation. So the short end goal is, let's say, can you, find one, uh, can you search in one million images in less than a second? Not text, inside those images. Pixel based, can you do that? Can you search one million images per second? So these three problems seem to be major problems right now that we have and trying to deal with. Thank you so much.